So, let's talk about the Brussels effect, shall we? I would like to start uh, with saying that the Brussels effect is a scholarly concept which was developed by a US American scholar um, called Anna Bradford. And in simple terms, what it means is that uh, the Brussels effect describes Europe's uh, power to unilaterally set standards f to regulate global markets. So um, that means that in a specific type of area where there may be no laws or little restrictions, Brussels, which is the European Union and its member states, uh, comes up with um, law, a regulatory framework, uh, which uh, then may be even developing very demanding standards for a particular type of area. And um, although that may at first seem to be stifling innovation or limiting the freedom of businesses and people, um, it still eventually turns out that this type of regulatory framework becomes a global standard. In the area that I'm working in, which is technology regulation, uh, the most famous example to date that we have when it comes to the Brussels effect is the 2016 General Data Protection Regulation, the EU GDPR. Now, the General Data Protection Regulation, uh, when you look at it today, um, has sparked a lot of interest around the world in regulating an area which uh, traditionally has not been uh, on, the, on the focus, on the forefront for many policymakers. Uh, there is a professor in um, Australia, uh, in Sydney, the, used to work at the University of New South Wales, Graham Greenlee, and he keeps a database of countries from all over the world who are uh, developing data protection laws. And in 2023, 162 countries had data protection laws and national data protection laws, and most of them follow the example of the GDPR. So this is uh, evidence sort of that there, the Brussels, Brussels effect um, exists when it comes to the GDPR because when they are either developing new laws or remodeling existing laws, then they uh, follow the type of approach of the general data protection regulation, which means they use the same principles, they're thinking about embedding the same um, individual rights for people and so on. Now, the General data protection regulation, when you consider those principles and those rights, um, they are very, is very much based on a long tradition in uh, the European Union and its member states to be active in this area, which means when the European legislature adopted the general data protection regulation, um, it was also very clear which type of values, which type of fundamental rights uh, it wanted to promote. And um, in an area where, you know, the, around the 2010s, increasingly until today, we see much more power asymmetries in this type of environment with big players, big tech companies, um, and their dip different types of services, uh, social media platforms, etc. And so this was um, a clear incentive to have sort of a regulatory framework to protect um, the rights of the citizens and the residents in the European Union um, versus um, those uh, abuses of power when it came to protection of their, protection of their personal data. Um, but of course, the general data protection regulation is not, and by far not, the only regulatory framework in this area. So more recently, we saw the adoption of the Digital Markets Act, Digital Services Act, many other acts, and most recently, the Artificial Intelligence Act. Now, the question that I would like to focus on going forward when it comes to the Brussels effect and this type of technology regulation and comparing this to the tradition that we have with the GDPR is whether the adoption of these new regulatory frameworks, such as the Artificial Intelligence Act, can to the same extent as the GDPR claim to actually be promoting certain type of values, uh, maybe we can even call them norms, but it's essentially about fundamental rights, human rights, human dignity. Um, and when we have this, this new type of regulatory frameworks, of course, we have much less experience. The European legislature has much less experience. Uh, which type of underlying principles, which type of underlying rights that there actually should be promoted. And, um, but still, the legislature hopes um, that, of course, the Brussels effect will emerge and will take effect. Uh, and that then raises the question whether the Brussels effect is becoming sort of a mechanism uh, that is not there any longer to 
promote values, promote human rights, fundamental rights, but rather uh, sort of a tool, um, a mechanism that is being used to uh, promote European power interests, European economic interests. And this is uh, something that we will see uh, going forward. It would be very uh, regrettable if this were uh, to be happening, particularly because it would also undermine the, the credibility and the quality of uh, the regulatory frameworks which are being developed in, in the European Union. And that in the long run would also undermine the position that the European Union has in the world.